Hello, my name is Mel Philbrook, and welcome to another Tech Talk session brought to you by Frontier Precision. In this session, I'll show you how to create a GNSS contact and a VRS service style to be used with Trimble Access. As a reminder, you need to make sure that you have a Wi-Fi connection through your device, and that would be either using Wi-Fi or an external MiFi or a Wi-Fi broadcasting cellular phone. Once it's connected to your device, you will see a symbol, which is a circle with an arrow showing that it's connected. Alternatively, you can click the window logo and you should see that you are connected to an external source. As you can see, my Wi-Fi is off, but I'm using ActiveSync pass-through, and that's why you see that it says it's connected through ActiveSync. Once you're connected to the internet, you will need to click on the settings icon and then click on the connect icon and then you will need to click on the GNSS contacts you'll need to click on new and then you'll need to give a name for your GNSS contact something that makes sense in this case we are going to be connecting to the Colorado VRS now VRS, and so I'm going to name it Colorado VRS Now. The contact type will be an internet rover. Right click on network connection, and we will use Wi Fi Active Sync. If the VRS that you're using uses NTRIP, you'll need to make sure that you check box Use NTRIP. Under the NTRIP username, key in your username that you have been given by your VRS provider. In this case, it is FPI Demo 1. You'll need to now key in the NTRIP password. There is an option to connect directly to a mount point, and we encourage you to do so to alleviate any type of human error or user error out in the field. By checking on this checkbox, and you will see you now have the ability to type the mount point name. These mount points offer a different types of correction sources, either RTCM or CMR, at, usually are provided by VRS providers. They also usually dictate the type of datum which the user will use, whether it's NAT83 Cores 96 or NAT83 2011. For this purpose, we are going to type in a mount point for NAT83 2011. That mount point is NAT83 2011 underscore TVN underscore CMR underscore X. We'll page down and you will see you now need to click on and type in the IP address for the particular VRS. In this case, it is 
1.1.99. You are also able to type in aliases such as the one for the Colorado VRS Now as www.vrsnow.us. The advantages of typing in an alias, if the provider ever changes the IP address, usually the alias stays associated with the new IP address. The port, the IP port is the IP port for access to mounts. The standard for most VRS systems for the IP port is 2101. However, you need to check with your VRS provider because these ports can be different. We will now review what we have done with our GNSS contact. We chose to use NTRIP. We chose to connect directly to a mount point. That mount point is a 2011 NAT83 2011 mount point for CMRX. We typed in the username. We typed in the password correctly. We typed in the correct IP address and port, and we are now able to click store. We will now hit exit. The next thing we're going to do is show you how to create a survey style properly for VRS correction sources. In order to do so, from the main menu, Trimble Access, we need to go back to Settings, click on Survey Styles, and click New. We're going to call this survey style something appropriate to the VRS that we are using. In this case, it's Colorado VRS Now RTK. The survey style type is GNSS and clicked Accept. Clicked Accept again. And now you have the ability to make some changes. Under the rover options, you'll click Edit. The survey type is RTK. However, the broadcast format is incorrect. Even though we're receiving CMRX corrections from the VRS, we actually need to choose to receive VRS CMR. If your VRS is connect, mount point is a RTCM correction, you will need to choose VRS RTCM. You can choose to store points as vectors or as positions. We prefer to leave the choice as store points as vectors. The elevation mask and PDOT mask of 10 and 6 appropriately are fine and page down. You'll need to choose the correct receiver type, how it is measured to, and you can predefine that this is a 2 meter fixed height rod. You have the option of typing in the serial number and you have the option of choosing what type of GNS signal tracking that you need to do with this VRS source. In this case, L2C and GLONASS is all that we need. Page down to the last page, and you have the option of turning on XFIL and also allowing the receiver to use TILT which is available in the latest R10 receivers. Click Accept. 
under the rover data link, which is the second option, you'll need to change the type to internet connection. This is going to allow you to use either the built-in modem of a TSE3, a MiFi connected wirelessly to a TSC3, or if you're operating in a Wi-Fi enabled environment via Wi-Fi. Under GNSS contact, if you right arrow, you have the option of now choosing to use a certain GNSS contact based in this style. If you choose to use the VRS contact or GNSS contact that's associated with your survey style, you have no reason to prompt for GNSS contact. However, if you're building a survey style that is to be used with many different VRSs, you would want to choose prompt for GNSS contact. In our case, our survey style was named specifically to use a VRS and a VRS mount point, so we're not going to choose to prompt for GNSS contact. Click Accept. And click Store. You've now created a GNSS contact and a VRS style to be used with a VRS system. In conclusion, we showed you how to verify the ability to connect to an internet via an internal modem, external MiFi, or Wi-Fi broadcasting phone. We showed you how to create a GNSS contact and we also showed you how to create a VRS style. We thank you for attending an, this Tech Talk session brought to you by Frontier Precision. And again, don't forget to download our Frontier Precision app. It's a one-stop resource to everything you need.